In this video series, we're going to cover how to work with tabs in InDesign. I do have a files to download for students. So it says files for students and it says tabs and it's a zip file. We're going to be doing a sample of a menu, an annual report, and a schedule. Um, so make sure you download these files and then um, there should be a uh, fonts folder in there and there should also be a PDF in there. So let me go ahead and open this up. Uh, it shall have fonts. So to load any of these fonts, you would simply double click and hit the install button. If that does not work and you do not get the uh, install button pop up, then you may have to go to the control panel, um, search for fonts on your PC and uh, copy them to that folder. So there are fonts uh, folders on PCs and Macs and that's where those system fonts are. So um, you can copy and paste them in there. Preferably though, just simply double click on each of the font files and click install. Now there is also a PDF of the finished piece. I have supplied in this uh, particular exercise an InDesign file. The InDesign file has um, text that's just typed in with a tab key hit where there needs to be a tab. And then, um, Either underneath that uh, work, working text, there is a finished sample, or the sample is on a different page, depending on how much room the text takes up on a page. So the first one is a menu. The next one is a sample of an, a piece of an annual report. And the third one is a schedule. Each of these use different forms of tabs. The top one uses a line on decimal with a um, actually, yes, a line on decimal with a leader character. The second one in your report uses right align tabs. So these line on their right hand sides, plus there's some additional uh, use of paragraph rules. And then the third one uses uh, left tab alignments. These align on the left hand side of the text. Plus, um, we're also using uh, first line indents and left indents on this to get this uh, stuff to properly manage, I believe. So um, looks like I have a little error here, so I need to fix that, but uh, this should be up close to the canine nose work demo. So we gotta get that fixed. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, so let's carry on with InDesign. So we do have in InDesign this working file I'm going to open it. It's in the student files. It's called tabs practice file. So you guys do not have to import anything from Word this time. This is all in InDesign. So here is the working file. This is a three page file or maybe four actually. If I go to my pages panel, you'll see that I have a first page, which is the menu. And because there's not enough room to perform the um, design underneath it, there's a blank page for you to use for that menu design. Um, here's another page which has the annual report sample. There will be enough room underneath that to put your attempt. And then finally, the last page has the schedule sample text and there is enough room below to also put your finished piece there. All right. So we'll get started here in just a second. So let's start working on this menu. Um, what I would like you to do is go ahead and grab this text box, which may have a little extra text in there and pull that down so you can see all the text and then copy and paste that to the second page of the document. So that's edit copy or control C, go to the second page of the document by double clicking on it and go to edit paste in place. That will pop it exactly in the same position as the previous page. This is the only one where we have to copy and paste because we don't have enough room to, to manage. Now you will see that I have finished uh, this piece. So um, I will reference this on an occasion. So I'll zoom into the uh, finished piece and we'll get a move on. Now, first things first, we will separate this into two columns. There are a couple different ways to do this, but I'm gonna do this the easier way. And since these kind of, um, they don't equal out perfectly, but uh, there will be a little white space down the bottom corner and that's okay. But we're gonna just use the predetermined um, column structure that InDesign has uh, up in the control panel. 
So I'm going to switch to my type tool and simply instead of going over here to the tool panel, when you have a box selected that has text in it, if you just simply double click, it will automatically switch to the, um, the um, type tool. Now, with my monitor being smaller, I'm going to stretch this out a little bit more, and you may have a smaller monitor too. But um, in the paragraph formatting, so I have to click on the backwards P here for the paragraph formatting controls. In that paragraph formatting control area, if I stretch out this uh, window, you will see eventually a number of columns that pop up. And this is kind of a pain in the neck because I have such a small, min small um, monitor. But here is that area in the control panel. Now, if you have a larger computer, you'll be able to see this. But the smaller computers, sometimes you have to move the window and stretch it out to find it. I will go ahead and go up to two columns on this. Now, after I do that, I'm going to have to minimize my window a little bit and move it back to the position for me to work. So we did that. Now, if I hit the W key, I would get a W in wherever my um, cursor is. So I'm going to hit the escape key on the keyboard that transitions to the selection tool. And then I'm going to hit the W key. Now we can see the two column layout. We will worry about how long or short this is um, momentarily once we start to format the text. I'm going to zoom into this first area and we're going to talk about how to manage the tab. Um, now, before I do the tab, I usually will set it the, the proper font, uh, point size, letting, all that stuff. So let's get some formatting done for that first. Uh, if I go to my practice file that's finished, we can see that this font is Adorn Condensed um, Sans Serif. So Adorn Condensed Sand, and it's about 15 points of type. Whoops, let me click off of that. Uh, 15, and it's got auto letting, 18. So Adorn condensed, 15. So all I have to do is uh, triple click inside the uh, paragraph. First off, go to the character con controls and triple click inside of the font name or click and drag and start typing in ADO. And it will automatically um, go to that area. If, if you need to put an R in there, fine. Uh, but I start typing the name of the font. So here we are, Adorn Condensed Sands. And I'm going to pop this up to be 15 points. Now let's talk about tabs. This is the thing that I think people are um, needing the practice on. First, before I even create a paragraph style, I'm going to set this tab. Now I'm going to make it so I'm zoomed out and I have a little bit of room above my um, column. So let me just make it so you can see when I get this tab up, what this looks like. So to set the tab, I'll go to type and tabs. And if this pops up anywhere other than directly over the column, you can always move it. Or sometimes this works, but sometimes it doesn't. If I click on this uh, position panel above text frame, this little mag um, magnet, it will automatically position it so that it is aligned to the column width. So that's a really nice thing is that, you know, when, when you're working, you want it to kind of align so you can see how it's reacting. Now, when we talk about pricing like this in a menu, oftentimes these um, prices are aligned on the decimal point. There are different kinds of tabs. This is a left align, a center align, a right justified, and an align on decimal. We do want the align on decimal tab, so we have to select that as an option before we set the tab. To set the tab, you would click above the ruler in the gray band. So I'm going to click. Now I don't want to click too far out to the edge because if I do, the decimal point um, will be too far and the price will go to the next line because it has to accommodate the space for the numbers out after the decimal. So I'm going to go in just a little bit further in than what I imagine I would need. I click one time. Now, the thing about tabs is when you go to move tabs, sometimes you accidentally add another tab. So if I wanted, I need to move this tab. So let's say I'm being a little sloppy. Um, I'm gonna try to be sloppy here. Oops, I just deleted the tab. To delete a tab, by the way, you just click and drag down off that um, dark gray area. So click and drag down, the tab is gone. I'm gonna pop it back up there. 
Now, sometimes again, when you're playing with tabs, um, you'll accidentally click next to the tab instead of on the tab and you'll be moving it. And it's like, nothing's moving. Well, that's because now you have two tabs. So make sure you're careful to only have one and then delete um, the extra ones that you accidentally pop in there. Now, I'm gonna move this until the tab um, positions the decimal to the point where, oops, till it goes to the edge of the column, but not beyond, it went beyond. So I'm gonna bring it back just a smidge. And uh, if I try to you know, pop it just a little bit to the right, it keeps going down. So you just do this until the last little you know, adjustment is as far as it will go. So that's what I just did. Now, if you wanna really practice tabs, <laughs> you can go in and practice formatting. You can go in and you can go into the um, food names and you can retype in, you know, adorn and choose that font, set it at 15 over uh, auto. Auto letting has these parentheses and you can now play around with its tab. So if you really wanna try to practice tab positioning, you could, I suppose, do this over and over again, <laughs> but you know how I like to use paragraph styles. <laughs> So I would just go ahead and close this tab off and make a paragraph style of this top piece. And um, here, my paragraph styles are already built, but um, what, and you'll notice there's folders for each of these um, extra credit pages. There's a, I got the Millgrove menu, the annual report, the schedule, and you can create tabs within sets or folders. So I would create a new folder and call it menu or whatever. And then as long as that's selected, when I create a paragraph style from this formatting, I hit the plus sign, there's my paragraph style, it pops down in there. Now I am going to name this uh, food and price, let's say, and hit okay. Uh, as you have known before on previous exercises, now I can go to each food and price and tell it that it is that particular, assign that particular um, style to it. Now, the reason why the tabs are automatically pushing out to the um, right is because you can see I have my hidden characters turned on. If you can't remember how to do that, go to type and show hidden characters. So that's something I should have said in the beginning, show hidden characters. That shows that when I gave you this piece of our, or this InDesign file that I did hit the tab between the name of the food and the price. So the food, so the um, item automatically goes over there. If there was no tab hit there, it would not do that. And you would have to put your cursor in between the name and the food and just hit the tab key. Okay, so I've given you a fairly clean file. So I'm going and uh, popping in the um, paragraph styles for uh, each of these items. Hopefully I've got them all there. Oops, we missed that one. And uh, there's a little bit different look to the tabs set for these additional items. So if I look at the original file, we'll see that there's add-ons and the tabs here are aligned on the decimal, but they're pushed in the right a little bit. We also have this text formatting where the text here is pushed in from the left and the right a little bit. So this is called a left indent over here on the left side, and this is called a right indent. So we're going to have left indents and right indents and a tab on this. Now this particular font is Aris Medium 10 over 12. So let me go back to the original file and I'm going to click four times to grab this entire paragraph. You do want to click that way because you want to ensure you're going to get this hidden character. So one, two, three, four, and I get the whole paragraph. Now this was Aris Medium, so I'm gonna start typing Aris. You will, may have to load the font. Uh, again, that's early on. We talked about that. This is 10 over 12. 10 points font size, 12 points letting is the space between them. Now this does indent from the left a little bit. So I'm gonna go to my paragraph formatting controls up here in the control panel. And on the left indent, that's right here. You can kind of float your cursor over, it'll tell you. So we're gonna indent that, indent that to the left just a bit. I don't know if it's 0.25 or not. I probably should check on my original file. Looks like it's 0.81 or 1875. So we'll just go back to the um, indents here. Oops, let me get to the original. And 0 .8, 0 0.1875, there we go. 
I also did a right indent to kind of get this uh, text out from underneath the pricing because I want the pricing to be able to stand out. The right indent is located here where it says right indent and I'm going to pull that in. Oops, click the up arrow until that doesn't crowd out the pricing. Now, is this 0.1875? I don't know. Let me go check. Looks like it's 0.2778. So I'll go back here and pop this in another one. Doesn't look like 0.2778 is a, an option. So I'm going to type in 778 after the two. And that is uh, going to work. Now, we do need to set the tabs for this information here with the uh, add-ons. So I will select both of these elements, okay? This will probably have to be a character style because the tab is going to be different. Anytime something is different within the paragraph, including tabs, you would hit, you would create a pair or a character style. So um, I am going to go ahead and grab both of these because might as well affect both of them. Bring up the tab um, window again. So that's under type and tabs. Make sure it's the width of the column, which it is. And this will be another decimal point tab. I'm gonna just pop it out here towards the right, but not so far that it's next to that little right indent triangle. So pop it out here somewhere. Now I will click on it and move it, making sure you're accurate that you're clicking right on it. Otherwise it adds another one. I'm gonna pull that out until the $2 zeros kind of line up to the six, okay? Just for optical balance, that's how I had that. Now that looks pretty good, so I close the tab. Now it does appear as if these were done with a character style here of um, where this particular typeface is different than the um, description. So here we have Eris, here we have Adorn Condensed. So Adorn Condensed, here we have Eris Medium. Now, is this a character style? Well, let's take a look. The add-ons are actually a character style. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't look like it's applied them, but I will go ahead and make a character style um, after I do the, um, the tab, so, or after I do the, the pricing. Now, if I go back to paragraph styles, it will probably show this as um, a plus sign, geez. Food name, food and price, oops. Oh, I never created a paragraph style from this. Before I do anything, guys, let's create a, uh, let's see, this is a new paragraph, so there's a backwards P. Let's create a paragraph style from this, pardon me. I've got the tab set, we'll do the paragraph style, then we'll do the character style. Almost got ahead of myself. So I'm gonna click on my menu uh, folder in my paragraph styles area and hit the plus sign. And I'll by default call it paragraph style one. So I'm going to double click on that and we're going to call it uh, food descriptions and hit OK. So now these are food descriptions. Now I'll change that $2 to the um, font that is the same as the top, which is Adorn Condensed. So I'm going to click on that, type in Adorn, get the Adorn Condensed. It looks good. Now you see it's got a plus sign because I haven't done a character style. You know, I've overridden something in this uh, paragraph style. So I'm going to go to my character styles. And I know I already have one called add-ons because I've already done this before, but I'm gonna hit the plus sign and I'm going to um, put, call this add-on pricing. <laughs> you can call it add-ons if you want. I just already done my practice, my practice run. Um, so I have a couple additional names here. Now I'm going to go to the other $2 and apply that character style. Now, if I go back to paragraph styles, there should not be a plus sign because I have embedded a character style within the paragraph style instead of just overriding the text. Now, I will now apply my uh, food description. Let me put that at the bottom because I get a little confused my food descriptions to things, and then go through. Uh, usually what I do is I'll uh, pop these in here, then I'll go back in and do any of the add-ons. So just get these all done. And same thing with this. And now I'm gonna go in and pop in my character styles 
for any of the add-on text or add-on pricing. Let's make sure I get that decimal point. I don't want to have partials. And I believe that the um, on the on the finished piece, I'm pretty sure on the a la carte we also have the pricing as that adorn condensed font. So I'm going to go in and apply that character style to those as well. Now the bad thing about character styles is you do have to click and drag over the items to change them. So it takes a little bit of time. Whereas paragraph styles, you can just have your cursor in the paragraph and apply it. You don't even have to have it selected. Okay, so we're gonna compare what this looks like as to, to what the other looks like. So let's see what we have here. It does look like we have uh, some additional spacing we have to add before each of these um, food names and prices. And it also appears as if we need to add a leader character. So let's go and do those. Now to add the space before, we're just gonna click on any of the names of the foods and prices, okay? And then I'm gonna go to the paragraph style and double click on it and edit it. And that's under indents and spacing. So this just has a space above. So I'm gonna move this off to the side and find the space before and just increase that until it looks good. I'm not sure what the number is, just do it till it looks good and hit okay. Now I'm also going to reflow this text so that the um, items kind of look nice and come together. Uh, we do have a situation where all a cart will need to be in its own area. So I squish that all up. I hit the plus sign and then I will pull and drag a box for the a la carte. Now, if the text doesn't fit, just pull the box wider until the text fits. And then we'll center this to the layout. And we'll also adjust it so it is pushed down just a little bit because we want to kind of mimic the space that's between the um, food names and the descriptions above them. So I want to try to be as accurate as I can. There we go. It looks like I'm not quite centered. So let me pop that into perfect center. There we go. And when you have smart guides on guys, you'll see that the pink line pops up. That tells me that's exactly centered to the page, which is fabulous. All right, lastly, let's talk about the leader character. Now I'd forgotten when I set my tab up that this needed a leader character. Now, um, we usually would edit the paragraph style on this. And this is where people kind of get confused because you don't get that little um, ruler above the text when you're editing the paragraph style. So let's go in here, put the cursor in that first paragraph. And I just, I just have to have my cursor in there, guys. I don't have to double click or triple click. I just typically do double click or triple click just so you can see where I'm at. But you just have to have your cursor in there. I'm gonna edit the paragraph style. Um, but before I do, I need to figure out what character I want to use. Now, according to this piece here, this leader character is falling central horizontally in the center of the letters. So up and down center. So before I do anything, I gotta figure out what that character is. So I'm going to put my cursor right before the, the word platter, just to just kind of figure out what I've got going on. Now we haven't really talked much about glyphs in this class. Um, in type class, we talk about them, but uh, here we don't cover them too much, but it's time to maybe go ahead and look at glyphs, uh, glyphs for this particular font. So we can get that center hit horizontal character. It's probably a bullet point, but let's go to type. And then there's a glyphs panel. It's uh, one, two, three, six items up down from the top. So you get this window for that particular font. Hmm, that's odd. Maybe I should highlight the P and P. Oh, well, wow, this is interesting. So this font doesn't appear to have my glyphs popping up. That is unusual because I used them yesterday and they came up. So yes, how interesting is that? <laughs> I should be able to get the whole glyphs pal panel for the whole alphabet. So this is being a little bit troublesome. So pardon me, but yeah, when you do glyphs, there should be letters for the whole entire thing. So instead of alternate selection, I'm gonna show entire font. There we go. 
there was a setting that was set where I'm like, where are all my glyphs? Now I am looking for a bullet point in this font. Now, not all fonts have glyphs. Okay, if you get free fonts, oftentimes they don't come up with, uh, it, hardly any glyphs have been designed. So um, you can go in here and if it's a fairly professional font, you'll find bullet points, you'll find, you know, you'll find a half inch, you know, quarter inch, that kind of thing. Here, there's no half inch, quarter inch. So this is probably along the lines of more, oh no, here's a half inch, there's a quarter inch, but you don't see three eighths or anything. So you'd have to build those. But you know, this has a fair amount of glyphs. It's not great, but it's fair. So here at the bottom, I can see here's this uh, bullet right here. So if I double click on that and then close my glyphs panel, you'll see that's what I want is that horizontal sort of item. Now I don't want this here. I want to use that as a leader character. We are not going to copy and paste or pop that in there several times. What we're going to do is we're gonna copy it once. So I click and drag over it. I'm gonna cut it actually, we're gonna copy and delete it. So let's edit cut, which is control or command X. So it deletes it and remembers it. Then I'm going to edit the tab of this piece. So I'm gonna double click on the paragraph style. Don't edit tabs outside the paragraph style once one is created. Now I typically will move this down so I can see what's happening with my tab. And then I click on the word tabs. Now, no longer does this ruler align to this column. So that's a little frustrating because it's kind of hard to visually understand. So this here where the double triangles are is the zero mark, which is where to the, to the left of the word mill. And if I click on my darker part of the ruler, you will see that the right triangle is the end of the column. This icon here is the point where the decimal point tab is positioned. So I'm gonna click on it, but don't move it, just click on it to activate it. And in the leader, I'm going to put, I'm gonna use the space bar first. So there's a space and I'm gonna hit control or command V to paste that bullet. And I'm gonna hit the space again. And then I'm gonna hit the tab key just to see what it does because I do have preview on. I always turn on preview and that looks pretty good. I don't want my leader to be too tight or too loose. And so I'm gonna hit okay. And I'm gonna compare it to the PDF. I've given you guys a PDF. I have the original file I can compare it to. And that looks pretty good. So this leader character had a space bar before it and a space bar after it to give it a little bit of um, negative space between it and, you know, between all of its uh, leaders. Now you can see that all of those leaders have been positioned properly in all of the pieces, except for one, biscuits and gravy or chip beef gravy. Now that's got a really long name. If we look at the original file, you can see how that was managed. There's been a break to the next line, not a return, not a paragraph return, a soft return. And there has been a, uh, there's been some editing done on that paragraph style. There is a left indent on this, but then on the first line, there's a minus left indent. So let's see how we can do that in the paragraph style. So here, um, it, does, it does look like after the words biscuits and gravy, they did put a soft return. So we put our cursor after gravy and hit shift and return, not shift and enter on the numeric keyboard. If you hit shift enter, it's a whole different thing. So um, actually do it before the or in chip beef gravy because you don't want that extra space. So shift return. Now that shows that this is a line break, not a paragraph return. Now there's no plus sign on the, on the um, paragraph style, but we are gonna need to edit this so we can get that indented. So we're going to double click on the food and price paragraph style. And we are going to go to four items down, indents and spacing. And we're gonna put a left indent on this to the point where the word or is just to the left of biscuits. Now, whatever number we use for left indent, on the first line indent, we are going to use the same number with a minus in front of it. So I'm gonna copy that number, paste it, and put a minus in front of it. Then I'll hit the tab key and you'll see how magically that works and it doesn't mess anybody else up. The first line indent on these is a minus because we have an overall left indent that's a positive. 
Now I'm going to hit OK and zoom out and save it. Now, I don't think, according to what I'm seeing on the finished piece, I don't think there's anything else that we need to look at. Everything else looks good. So we're done with this portion and ready to move on to the next. So I will stop the video.